Um, I remember I was studying in the UK and everyone was sneaking in cigarettes and stuff. I was sneaking in mooncakes. And recently, one of my black friends that I shared mooncake with told me he was craving mooncakes. And that caught me by surprise because he didn't tell me he liked it. And so I made this video for him and, and everyone else watching, of course. Of course. Let's start with making the inverted sugar. Now you may ask, why the fuck do we need inverted sugar syrup? Uh, can't we just use any other alternative? And yeah, yes, yes, you can, I'll get to that. But um, mainly because it's sweeter and it gives a darker brown color, like a coffee color, if that's a word for the name of color. And it doesn't have any other flavor like honey. Honey has its own flavor. But yeah, you can use honey to substitute if you don't mind the honey taste. Now to a pot, add 22 grams of lemon juice, 150 grams of water, and 300 grams of granulated sugar. And I like to just let the sugar dissolve in water at room temperature before I turn the gas on to low medium heat and bring it up to 128 degrees Celsius. And now it should look somewhat amber color. And then turn off the heat because you don't want it to go any thicker. Now because we need to counter the acid from the lemon juice, so on the side, mix 30 grams of water, 0.5 grams of baking soda, and pour it into the syrup, stir it around, and you should get some bubble, actually a lot of bubbles, but don't worry, it will dissipate after you rest it for a few days. Now to a pod, add 200 grams of lotus seeds, preferably the ones split in half with the skin on, rather than the ones with the skin off but still has those stinky bitter garbage stems inside of them because the skin is easier to work with. Add enough water to cover all the lotus seeds. Bring it to a boil and this is where you add a tablespoon of alkaline water to help the skin separate from the lotus seeds. Simmer for 15 minutes. Drain the dark red water out and then add clean water back in. Continuously drain the water out and the skin should follow the water and fall off naturally. You know when you're done when the water coming out of the pot is clean and doesn't have any skin falling off anymore. Now put the lotus seed in a pot back on the stove. Simmer for an hour to an hour and a half or until you can pinch the lotus seeds and they just turn to mush. Drain the water or, or not, I like to add the water back in so it's much lighter in color and cleaner. Now put it into a blender and grind it into a smooth paste. Here's where you might need to add some water to get it going because it's very thick. I like to run it through a fine mesh just to be super sure the lotus seed paste is nice and smooth. Now to a pan, add 100 grams of vegetable oil and heat it up until it starts smoking. Leave one fourth of it in the pan and pour the rest out and add 100 grams of sugar in on a medium low heat to make a caramel. When the sugar is all melted and turned red, add the lotus seed paste in in sessions and slowly folding and turning the paste into itself because you don't want to form any air inside the paste so you don't want to go too fast. And once the lotus seed paste is fully incorporated with the caramel and the oil, add 50 grams of brown sugar and fully incorporate it into the mixture. And once it's fully mixed in, add 30 grams of malt sugar. Fully incorporate that into the mixture too. Malt sugar will help with the pliability of the paste once it's been refrigerated. And now you can add the oil in two or three parts and fully incorporate it into the paste. I'm skimping over like an hour worth of footage. So yeah, it'll take a while if you do decide to make this paste yourself. And you're basically done when the paste forms into a sort of a dough and it no longer sticks to the pan or the spatula. Now take it out to cool and I like to wrap it tight in cling film to put it into the fridge but that's optional. I just feel that's easier accessible and it saves space. 
Now this is inverted sugar syrup one day after it's been rested. Most of the bubbles are gone but if you want a cleaner syrup you can wait for another two days. Now to a medium sized bowl add 75 grams of inverted sugar syrup, 30 grams of oil, 10 grams of alkaline water and a gram of salt to balance the sweetness. Now mix that all together and you won't be able to mix it fully but uh, at least when I tried but it's fine because the flour will bond it together. Now add 150 grams of cake flour and fully incorporate it into the mixture and it will eventually form a dough. Now cover it with clinging film and put it aside to rest. Now as for the salted egg, this is how it will look like if you try to buy it outside. The black shell is just a rub to marinate the egg to like make it salty and you need to clean that off before you can use the Egg. Now crack the egg and separate the egg yolk from the egg whites because we won't be using the egg whites in this recipe so you can just do whatever with it. Now spray some alcohol onto the egg yolks. I use sake because that's the spray bottle I used to make yakitori and this is just to remove the stinkiness that some egg yolk might have and the alcohol will burn off in the oven anyway. Now put the egg yolk onto a baking tray and bake in the oven at 150 degrees celsius for 6 minutes to 6.5 minutes depending on your yolk size. Now the dough should look nice and shiny after it's been well rested. Separate and form dough balls weighing 16 grams each. Get the lotus seed paste from the fridge and weigh them alongside the egg yolks. Form the lotus seed paste into a dough ball, make an indent on the ball and slowly stretch it out. Put the egg yolk inside and wrap the rest of the lotus seed paste around the egg yolk without trapping any air inside. Roll it nice and round and put it aside. Take the dough ball and flatten it as much as possible on your hand. The hand helps it curves as it thin out and it doesn't stick as easy. Place the lotus seed ball in the middle and flip it around. Gently close the dough around it and it is fine if you don't close it completely. You can just hide the crack spot like under. Now slightly dust these mooncake balls with flour and shake off the excess. If you have a square mooncake mold, Shape the ball into more of a square shape before you put it into the mold. And shape it into a cylinder shape if you have a round mold. Place them on a baking tray and lightly spray with water before baking in the oven at 195 degrees celsius for 5 minutes. In the meantime, add an egg yolk to a tablespoon of water and mix well. When the mooncake are out of the oven, lightly brush it on all sides, except the underside, and put it back into the oven at 165 degrees celsius for 5 more minutes. And brush it again when it comes out of the oven, and then again put it back into the oven for the last time at 165 degrees celsius for 45 minutes. And that's basically mooncake done. But don't get too excited because mooncake are actually best eaten 2-3 to three days after baking. So when the mooncakes come back to room temperature, place it in a container and rest it in room temperature for 2-3 to three days. So you have reached the end of this video and that means there's a high chance that you'll make this recipe. And that makes me happy because I'm not the only one getting fat from all of this oil and sugar. And so if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe for more equally unhealthy food.